What used to be dubbed the Oriental region and is now considered Asia, North Africa, and the Middle East has long been a source of fascination and exoticism to the Western Occident. The 19th century experienced a rise of Orientalism, an art form which revealed the biases, misconceptions, and feelings of superiority felt by the West towards the East. This video will feature a piece of artwork named The Snake Charmer by Jean-Léon Jérôme. Painted in 1879, this piece is a combination of social, political, and cultural contexts that led to the creation of a work controversial for many reasons, including a fictional blending of cultures, as well as the representation of the Orient as one-dimensional, homogeneous set of people. This painting was created in Constantinople, and Joam had had a history of visiting Egypt, as well as painting escapism through an idealistic representation of the Orient. Joam himself was a well-known artist who painted in the academic style. This style was characterized by rationality, high moral content, idealized form, historical accuracy, kind of, linear perspective, and muted natural colors. This style in particular carries a heavy Western influence, especially from the French Academy of the Arts. Now we will touch on a few main features of this painting and what they reveal about the Western view of the Orient. The first is ocular centrism. In this piece, the boy is at the center of the work. But contrary to standard practices, the background is lighter than the foreground creating an interesting bit of cognitive dissonance as the audience attempts to determine what the focus should be. Analysts debate on the meaning of the nakedness in this work. On one hand, the boy could be naked, not in a sexual way, but rather to convince the audience that there is no hidden trick to the snake charming. However, it is also possible that the boy carries a sexual undertone, given that snakes are often used as phallic symbols. This is an interesting interpretation as there is a general taboo on the sexualization of young boys. But in this painting, none seem to express interest in the boy himself, creating a similarity between the West and the East. However, it could also represent a forbidden desire of sorts for youth or for homosexuality. The interpretations differ, but it still contrasts when unclothed women are included in work, as it is almost always sexual due to the nature of the artist, male, and intended audience, also male. One example of this concept is The Belly Dancer, by the same artist, clearly illustrating the contrast in interpretation. As we continue to look, we can notice something strange. No one is looking back at us. In this painting, it is almost as if we are looking at a scene behind a screen. We cannot clearly see the faces of the men watching the boy or analyze their postures, as both are hidden by the distance and their clothing. This leads us to an absolute absence of information and in body language and thoughts, as well as feeling of distance and disconnectedness. Even from what we can see, they appear to be emotionless, thus giving us nothing to connect to. It almost becomes one form instead of many individuals representing the two-dimensional grouping of these cultures once more. The idea of staring, as we have discussed before, can be good or bad depending on the context. Some artists have leveraged the power of staring to allow their audience to engage with the unusual individual, to better the interactions with those individuals in the future. However, here the audience is invited to stare without interaction, therefore encouraging the othering of the Orient region from the Occident. Enamored by the idea of the Orient, Westerns would likely look at this picture with intrigue. The colorful walls, exotic fauna, and the unusual garb would all draw their attention and they would say, ah, yes, the Orient. What a curiously beautiful place. Or as the artist was French, ah, l'Orient, quelque part si curieux et si beau. However, this is said in duality with the Western culture of pillaging and quelling the individual and beautiful cultures in the region, justifying them to their own eyes and palates. The picture illustrating this point is Two Warriors in the Alhambra Palace, the Court of Lions in the background by Rudolf Ernst. This can be seen in the blatant blending of cultures. This painting brings together various non-compatible elements that the artist could not have seen together. Snake charming, for example, was not part of Ottoman culture, but rather practiced in Egypt. Additionally, the panels seen in the background are copied from a bath chamber in the Topokapi Palace in Istanbul, while the floor is more akin to that found in a mosque. However, this act of entertainment would not have been performed in a mosque. What some suggest is that the turbaned figure on the ground is a chief who invited the snake charmer to his quarters. However, the blatant lack of furniture or creature comforts does not provide strong evidence for this narrative. Lastly, even the snake seems to be a blend of species, taking strongly from the Burmese python, the North African python, or a mix of other snakes, none of which native to any particular region, much like all of the other elements in this work. Overall, this piece covers several important theories about art that we should have studied and that we have studied so far and shows the importance of critical analysis of culture and meaning behind pieces of art in order to question the misconceptions and misinterpretations of various cultures around the world by dominant groups.